Greetings and salutations and thanks for clicking on the video. Thought I'd show you guys my Sunday afternoon project. I installed Ubuntu Mate 1604 Beta on my old e-machine. Now, if you've watched my videos for some time, you know all about this machine, so I'm not going to go into it real deep. It was running Linux Lite. Nothing wrong with Linux Lite. Linux Lite was working beautifully. I have just been playing with Ubuntu Mate in the virtual machine that I set up when I did the video about it a while back and everything just works so I thought hey you know I'd really like to see what this does on hardware so I had a little extra time this afternoon and decided to go ahead and do that I'm also checking out some new screen capturing software called Voco Screen. this is in the Ubuntu repositories I've never used it before but I've heard good things about it. Ordinarily, to make these videos, I use Simple Screen Recorder, but Simple Screen Recorder is not available for Ubuntu 16.04 yet, and probably won't be until a week or two after the release becomes official. It seems that the developer of Simple Screen Recorder likes to let things get stable, so we're going to give this one a shot, and I like it so far. It's pretty cool. It's got some nice features, some good keyboard shortcuts to it, a uh, little countdown so when I go to start the video it shows a three two one on the screen pretty cool stuff here so we'll see how that works out alright um, now I did a video where I talked a lot about the coolness of Ubuntu Mate uh, the last video where I looked at Ubuntu Mate and Ubuntu Gnome when I went to install it on hardware today I decided that I would do something a little bit different than I ordinarily do. Uh, usually when I install Linux on my own personal hardware I get it up and running and I will go either to a TTY or a terminal and I will update the system and install software that I need just from the terminal. I'm just used to doing it that way and I can get a system spun up pretty quick. This time around I decided that I would use the Ubuntu Mate welcome screen. I talked about that a great deal in the video that I posted about Ubuntu Mate not too long ago. So I opened it up here and I came here and installed my software. Uh, I didn't install the codex package. I installed all the third-party codex when I installed the operating system so I'm assuming that uh, they may have some more codex in here but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I was able to come over here and get all the drivers up and running and believe it or not even for this old machine there is a driver and it's the uh, Intel microcode driver for the processor which uh, seems to be new to later versions of Linux uh, than I'm used to dealing with. I'm usually uh, dealing with stuff that's based on Ubuntu 14.04 and you can uh, install firmware packages here so I did that installed that driver got it going the video driver for this machine is already in the kernel because this is an older Intel card and it works perfectly fine no problems with that at all and there were some other things in here I looked at but the the main thing I mean the big deal here for the installation process was this software boutique which by the way is available in the menus you can go to the software boutique let's see I think it's under uh, uh, yep, there it is right there, the Software Boutique. So if I'd click that, I'd get another one. It's under Administration. And I went in here and opened up Internet and just clicked on these buttons and installed everything that I needed in that category. Put in uh, Google Chrome with one click, and I put in the Ice-T Java plugin with one click, and also got Spotify on the machine with one click. It is amazing what's in here, and it doesn't matter whether it's in the official Ubuntu repositories or not. When you do this one-click deal, it sets all this stuff up in the background. And as I mentioned in my last video, for new users, this is just unbelievably cool. I mean, if uh, this is the distribution of Linux that I would sit somebody down in front of who didn't know anything about Linux. Yes, up to this point I have said Linux Mint was the bomb for that, and in many ways that is a wonderful distribution to get started, but this attention to detail by the Mate developers is unbelievable. So I went through that and I got most everything I needed installed on the system. 
and then I did open up a terminal to install uh, the Voco screen and HTOP, but everything else I needed I was able to do there, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and open up a regular terminal here because I want to show you the one I did run into a couple of weirdnesses. Uh, this is a situation that probably 99% of the people out there won't have to deal with. What I wanted to do was set this machine up so that the hardware clock was on local time. And the reason why I want to do that is there is a hard drive that is in this machine that has an installation of Windows on it. It is not my installation of Windows. It is Cindy's installation of Windows. Now, nobody's booted into this thing for months because nobody wants to use it. And it's pretty well trashed anyway. But I keep it around just in case she should ever want to actually, you know, use the thing. And so therefore the machine has to run on local time. It's just easier that way. Um, to get that started, to, to change that, usually in older versions of Ubuntu that I'm used to working with, you open up a particular uh, initialization configuration file in the initializa initialization script folders. That doesn't work anymore. So I went to the Ubuntu wiki, the community page, and looked up Ubuntu time, and it seems that they have not bothered to actually update that yet for 16.04 or even 1510 <laughs> and so what they say to do there doesn't work so I went and looked up how to change to local time for the hardware clock for system D which is the initialization system that Ubuntu uses now I think they started using that with uh, when did they start using that it was like uh, maybe 1410 1504 I don't remember anyway um, so I actually found out how to do that in System D from the Arch Linux wiki. So thank you Arch Linux, that helped me out. And as you can see from this message right here, the uh, System D folks don't like the idea of running a Linux box on uh, local time. They really want it to be UTC. We'll see what happens with that never had a major issue with that before. I know that it can cause problems with certain programs, but it doesn't seem to be any program that I use. Of course, we have the uh, tilde terminal installed by default, and the only thing I don't like about it is that the font is a little bit small for me. So, I mean, it's fine to jump in here and run a couple of commands, but the fonts here look better. Now, I do know how to change that. I may or may not do that. It depends on how this goes with my workflow. I didn't change much about the desktop itself. I left it on the Ubuntu Mate layout. This looks like Ubuntu 10.10 Maverick Meerkat. And that was one of my favorite versions of Ubuntu. And unfortunately, that was an interim release. And it was not long-term support and all that happy stuff. So uh, didn't have it for very long. And it's kind of neat to have the Ubuntu Mate desktop set up that way. So... I'm going to leave it like that for a while. I did change a couple of little things here. I went into the um, Mate Tweak Tool and I changed this uh, from Marco Software Compositing to Marco Compton GPU Compositor. I don't want to run Compiz on this machine. Uh, it Compiz slows it down regardless of what desktop it is. So. I wanted something that was a little bit quicker and took advantage of the accelerated graphics, but not something as big as comp is. That seems to work out just fine. So this is how I'm going to run it. I, I, don't, uh, I don't foresee changing much about it. I like what I've seen so far. Everything worked fine. All of the software I needed I could get installed. Even found a groovy new screen recorder to play with, so that's awesome too. And the only other thing that I had which was slightly weird was on a couple of occasions when I went to restart the machine, it didn't want to restart. And they have the grub to set, if you do have it in a dual boot environment, they have that grub set there to wait like 30 seconds. 
which is kind of a pain because the keyboard on this particular machine, the USB keyboard, doesn't always wake up as soon as it boots up. And so you can sit here and hit the up and down arrows and the return key all you want to, and it won't do anything. It's like a, it's just a, a quirk with the hardware because this machine really is looking to have a PS2 keyboard, and I'm using a USB keyboard on it. This is an old machine, gang. But other than that, everything has worked beautifully, and I intend to run this for quite some time. And we'll we'll see. I'm going to try and keep this installed at least until it becomes an official release. Uh, I've made that promise to myself. I change distributions on this machine like I change socks. So hopefully I can uh, I, I can do that, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So thank you very much for watching the video. Sure do appreciate it. And uh, we will definitely be talking more about Ubuntu Mate as time goes on. Do check out freedompenguin.com. There is a great video there that uh, Matt Hartley just posted about Ubuntu Mate and also lots of other great uh, articles to read and videos to look at. Do check out Easy Linux on the web and check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And when you do that, give it a like if you would, please. So thank you for watching. We will.